All right, here we go. We are going to dive in to the menus of the brand new Sony A9. We're going to start with the quality, uh, and obviously most photographers will choose RAW plus JPEG. I shoot mostly an extra fine, um, but whatever, you can pick what you want to do. If you shoot in RAW, you can choose uncompressed and compressed, which make uh, pixel peepers really happy, which is great. Um, you have the image sizes are 24, 10, and 6 for the file sizes. Aspect ratio is same. There's still no square, which is a bummer for me, but uh, you can shoot in 3, 2, and you can also shoot in 16, 9, which I find very useful for vlogging if you're shooting stills with a specific intent to vlog. Um, your APS-C Super 35 setting is either auto, the default setting is going to be auto, and you can turn it on and off as needed, whatever you want to do. And we'll skip down the next menu here. Um, high ISO, I will leave a normal. Color space, I always change to Adobe RGB. People that shoot RAW will argue that's stupid, but I shoot a lot of JPEGs and it does make a difference. Okay, we're going to roll through here. There's a bunch of memory settings uh, in this camera, very similar to the A6500. Um, but it will not, these memory settings will keep sort of the front end settings, but won't keep all of your extreme custom settings sort of at the tail end of the menu. So it's very useful for kind of, you're going to set up for video or something like that, and then stills as well. But, uh, and once again, these are um, shoot sets. So setting a whole bunch of settings, you can kind of pick what you want. Um, this is a very useful thing, I think, for a lot of people that do both video and stills or do very different types of still photography. And they can set up uh, a custom setting. And you'll notice it said recall custom setting. You'll be able to store those on, on an SD card as well and move them from camera to camera. I don't use AFS ever. I use only AFC. And I've found that balanced emphasis works best even for extreme sports photography. But some of you may want to change between uh, AF and release. But I love balanced. I think it works great. Focus area wide is awesome. Uh, there are 693 autofocus sensors in this camera, which is just insane. Here we are in zone. Um, center autofocus is a great place to start if you're doing sports photography and you really don't know what to do. Flexible spot. Uh, also, the menus go left and right, so be careful with that. I, I really like using small. Uh, it gives me a tiny little, you know, tiny little spot that I can move around. Expand flexible spot will not just use the center, only the pixels in the center, but it'll move them around. Uh, it'll expand slightly and then lock on AF, expand flexible spot, which is a, it's like the magic setting if you're coming out of DSLRs. It's insane. Um, so these are all the different sort of options. Um, those are the ones I use the most, I guess. Here you can use the... Uh, the wheel or you can use the back toggle like so you can use the the um, there's two different ways to move this around the autofocus feature actually three if you figure that it has the uh, screen as well you can move your finger around this is kind of cool this is coming from directly from Canon Nikon where you can tie the AF point to the AF area so if you go vertical and you're doing running back running at you it's going to move the AF point up uh, which is very nice I always turn the AF Illuminator off because I shoot sports photography, but if you shoot a lot of weddings or in very, very low light areas with flash, you're going to want to have that on, but I never have mine on. I'll leave that off. Okay, this is awesome. So AF track sensitivity, this is your sort of stickiness. So the, the 5 is going to be the most responsive. It's going to be instant for like soccer heading and stuff and gone down. It's very nice. I, I never use AF with shutter. For my shutter release, I turned it off because I'm a back button focuser only. Thank God they turned pre-A off in this camera, so you won't have to turn that off. It'll already be off when you get out of the box. Um, AF area registration, um, delete AF, and all that stuff. You can figure that out. I have not used that at all. Um, So ISO, I always turn auto ISO off. I always want to be in control of my ISO. I'm always shooting manual. Many of you, even most of you, won't do that, but that's okay. Um, I just like to be totally harnessing all the 
camera's controls on my own. Um, but I've been doing this a while too. Uh, it's kind of neat that they've made the spot metering point. You can tie it to um, the autofocus point link or you can just have it in the center either way. I don't really use that either, but um, with an EVF as good as this camera has, it's, it's stunning how good it is. You really don't need it, I don't think. And you can do half stops or third stop for your exposure control too. Um, and then we'll just kind of, this is kind of neat down here on the bottom, like the Oldman Ultimeters, you can actually change the ultimate exposure, the index. So if your camera is off by like a third of a stop, you can actually adjust it back yourself without sending it back to the factory, which is really nice. It's a really, really nice feature. If you shoot a certain way, you can kind of dial it in to however you want. Some people like to underexpose or whatever. There's a ton of control in, in um, white balance controls on Sony's in general. Um, you have all the ones you, that you get in the Canon Nikon, but then you pick up all these additional fluorescent settings um, and then this, I, I call it the fish setting. I love this. It's called underwater auto, but it works flawlessly with a certain type of fluorescent light. I love that setting. And then, of course, you can dial in your own custom um, Kelvin. But in addition to being able to control your own Kelvin, if you go to the right, if you knock the, uh, uh, the, the control wheel to the right a little bit, you'll get this little graph thing that pops up. And you can actually add blue, which I do a lot. Um, and we're going to back out of this now and, and go back into uh, a more normal setting away from the custom. And what we're going to do is go back to a tungsten setting. It's really hard. I've never really found a digital camera that can really accurately totally nail tungsten until Sony. Um, and so let's go down to the tungsten setting for incandescent light. And then go to the right. Click right. Um, sorry click to the right and then this graph comes up and so if you just go down and add blue um, which is two left and two down you'll get this beautiful perfectly white whites it's awesome I, I would highly recommend people look into that um, okay we're gonna kinda go this is like an HDR an auto HDR setting I don't use that hardly ever but many of you that do landscape photography you'll love these settings It's very powerful um, and you can control how many stops and all this kind of stuff. It's pretty sweet. And on to the next menu. The creative styles are kind of cool. They sort of emulate film or uh, filters. Vivid is kind of a Velveeta cheese film setting, as I like to say. But there's all kinds of ones in here. Uh, sunset, night, autumn. Uh, brings all these like warm tones in. Black and white, sepia. And then back to standard. So standard's a good place to start. Um, if you mo mostly do stuff in post, you're going to want to leave all those alone. But if you, you know, if, you, if not. Okay, we're going to go on through these. Let's see here. Some of these are just repetition from the other cameras. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. But it's nice you can change your, your magnification on there. And next menu... Let's see, sorry about this dead space here. Okay, face detection is something that some of you may have not been able to use because it's not on your camera, but you, this camera will literally auto-detect faces, uh, which is phenomenal. It's very, very powerful. It works great. You can even register a particular face, and the camera will only look at that face and ignore all other faces. It it's, uh, sounds like science fiction, but it's real. Okay, let's go on to... This is where you do the registration of a face. It's pretty wild. Okay, now we're in the video modes. Notice it's camera one, camera two. So now we're into the, all the file formats. This camera can do uh, 4K in um, 30p. Uh, it's a very nice meaty file. Usually I shoot on speed at 24p at 100 meters. So, yeah. And then it also has the... Um, if you go into the regular setting, the XAVCS, you can get all the way to 120p with the same large throughput, which is wonderful. It's a great way to work. It's great for slow-mo. And if you really want to like slow things down, you can use the slow and quick settings where you get to set both your recording setting, frame rate, and then how many uh, frames per second in each of those settings you want. It's pretty, pretty cool. 
Um, it's a very nice way to work. Okay, so let's get out of here. And now we're into the, uh, this is film now, drive speed. I always go slow, track sensitivity, I leave it on standard. Otherwise it's too jumpy. The autofocus system is so fast in the camera that you really have to retard it and slow it way down to make it look natural. Um, let's see here. Here's your electronic shutter. So auto is just a sensing feature where if you put a flash in the hot shoe, it's going to sense that it's a flash and automatically change it to mechanical shutter. Um, I leave mine on electronic all the time unless I'm going to use strobes and then I go to mechanical. Um, so that's generally what I do. Uh, release without lens, I don't really do that. I disable it. Same thing with uh, release without card. I definitely disable that one. I like to make sure there's a card in the camera. Um, steady shot settings, um, you can do this by the lens. And of course this is IBIS, so it's, it's like, it's really cool. You can dial in what lens you have if it's a manual focus lens or whatever. We're going to keep going down. The finder frame rate is really fast. Sony's not published what it is yet, and they may not, but it's super quick. Uh, it keeps up with really, really fast action. These are all this sort of uh, zebras and video setting, grid line. You probably know what that is. Um, okay, live view display. Generally, you're going to use the camera in a setting effect on, but when you use strobes or a studio situation with uh, strobe lights and stuff, you're going to want to use the setting effect off. But generally, you leave it on. And uh, let's see here. Okay, now this is really intense. When you have a camera that makes no noise and shoots 20 frames a second, how do you know when you're actually taking a picture? Um, so this is like the first setting is off, where it doesn't show you anything. Type 2, as you will see, will make the center blink blue. It's like a neon blue. It's very easy to see. But I don't really like it in the center. Um, type 3 will give you a very, very understated in the far corners blinking when you're shooting. And Type 4 is my favorite. And this will give you the blue again. So it's really easy to see even in bright sunlight. So as you're shooting at 20 frames a second, it's going to pop those little corners in. And this is how you get confirmation that the camera is actually shooting. Otherwise, you'd never know it was, which is kind of insane. Okay, continuous shooting length. This will show you how many shots you can do or whatever. and it's, It just goes. It's really fast. Auto review should always be off on a mirrorless camera. No reason for it to be on. Okay, custom key shoot. This is how you get your back button focus back. Here you'll see all the custom keys. There's four of them. They're preset. Um, I like the way they're set up actually for the most part. But in the second bank, uh, same thing. It's the third bank that I always change. And here I do the um, AF AEL button I want on AF on. But let's take a look at the different options because you can make all, any of these buttons do all these different things. So here are your exposure one and two. Here's your flash settings. Here's your color white balance and image processing settings. Focus assist. There's 19 of these menus. It's incredible. Face detection. Um, now the movie settings. Um, it's just an enormous amount of stuff. Shutter steady shot, zoom, um, display, auto review. So these are all things you can task that AEL button for audio signals, send a smartphone, FTP uh, transfer, we're almost at the end, uh, monitor brightness, setup features, and finally the last menu is others which is not set. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back and find that AF setting, I think it was an AF Bank 2, that will give me AF on. I prefer to have the, um, yeah, AF on. So now my a AEL button is AF on and my AF on button is also AF on. So I can hit either one, whichever one I want to do, which is great. And the focus hold button is a button that's on many of the lenses. The G Master lenses usually have a focus hold button and it's pretty nice. You can, t you can task that with AF on, you can make it hold, you can do IAF with that button, whatever you want to do. But it's just really cool to have this customizable features. Now this is custom key playback. I never mess with these because uh, I just haven't found a, re a reason or need to, but um, 
they work great. The only one I'd use is the function button to send the tend to, to play memories. But all right, function menu set. A lot of Sony shooters don't even know about this. So if you hit the FN button in the back of the camera, you get you get 12 different custom settings that you can put in one menu area. So it's a really quick access. And here it is. So you just hit the FN button, function button, and you get 12 different options. And each of these options is customizable. So you can put them in any order you want, whatever you want. You just hit that, and then you can put one through six in the upper bank, and then one through six in the lower bank. It's a very quick, fast way to maneuver around the camera and overcome the, all the massive uh, menu items that are that available in the, uh, the A9. There's a ton of them. Tons and tons. Just keeps on going forever, it seems like. And this is just a set one button now. Okay. So enough of the function menu set. Let's get out of this. And there it is again. So you can see what we just changed. There's live view. Okay. And back into the menus. Dial set if you want to reverse it, you can. I like having the shutter speed on the back and the whatever. You can do whatever you want to. Okay, locking operation parts. This is great. I shoot on strobes a lot for basketball, and this means that I can actually set up my shutter speed and then lock it. So dial plus wheel would lock in your entire exposure where you couldn't bump anything or when you pick it up or set it down, mess up your exposure. It's very useful for certain types of photography. You get some options for how the camera sounds too. Um, so you can um, you can just have the camera turn off all the sound or you can have it on. I find I like a little bit of sound kind of down low. Um, I like the confirmation in the viewfinder as well. It's just nice that they're giving me lots of options for this. So you can send a smartphone computer, FTP transfer functionality, and that would, of course, go through the uh, Ethernet port. Airplane mode, so it doesn't look for wireless all the time. That'll help your battery. There's all your Wi-Fi settings, Bluetooth settings, location information, link set. It's just a ton of stuff. You can make a custom name for the camera. Okay. So lots of network settings that I know nothing about, to be honest, so I'm going to skip over those. All right, playback. These are all the playback ones. We're almost to the toolbox. Okay, so now we're going to enter the toolbox one. Okay, so volume settings. I love to change delete confirm. I love to have it delete first and not ask me if to confirm all the time. It drives me crazy. The Cancel first is what it comes when it's out of the box, but I can't stand it. I want to hit it delete first. Just saves me a button push to get rid of a bad picture. All right, so this is power save start time. I'm going to kind of roll through a lot of these. Your HDMI settings. USB connection is how you do that for firmware setups, for updates rather. Okay. All right, all this stuff. You can set your file name to something different, which is nice. I do PMR usually for mine. So you can just change that to whatever you want. You can use numbers or letters. It's handy. It's also good for keeping track of which camera did what. OK. Select so cord media. There are two slots in this camera. The upper one is a normal one. The lower one is the super fast. Uh, super high speed uh, SD card. Recording mode, this allows you to put only sort of uh, video or stills onto one of the card or the other or to sort them to JPEG and RAW or to move stills and video, whatever. Whatever you want to do, the options there. It's pretty pretty cool. And Okay, setup six, there's not a lot there we're going to do. We're going to kind of go down to display media info. And this will display media info on two different slots. It'll tell you how many images you have left or how much video you can record with what's left over on the card. And this is your 
body and lens version. It kind of shows your lens uh, firmware update as well, which is kind of cool. And setting reset kind of resets all your custom functions. And uh, here we go. Okay, now we're back to the original settings. I know this has been a long video. I appreciate your patience on this one. Um, so hang in there. But this is a fantastic camera. I'm so excited to uh, be able to talk to you about these uh, menu settings.